the Necron Warrior has seen a number of improvements in their brand new book, yep. and while they're not all pronounceable, hopefully we'll <laughs> uh, help them be a bit more understandable over the course of this video as we look at which option you should be considering in each of your units. Let's take a look. All right, so this first one we want to talk about is a pretty important one. I think you're going to see this in almost every single army. It is your mighty overlord. Yeah. Um, we will say there's a couple options that are really terrible. There are. Kind of broken yeah. it down to the two big builds, the most important, most interesting. Um, and so the first one we want to talk about is actually the model that comes in the Indominus box. Oh right? yeah, this, this is the one with the glaive yep. and the tachyon arrow. The tachyon arrow. So. They do come together, they come paired. Make sure you look very carefully when you look at the points. Yeah. Um, and this is a cool build. This has a, a really nasty weapon, actually. Yeah. Um, this is um, high strength, it's uh, minus three AP and D3 damage. Yeah. So a great close combat. It's actually, weapon. the glaive is a surprisingly good weapon. It is, yeah. Because yeah. it's actually, this is not, it's, you're not paying more for this or anything. It's not expensive. Yeah, right? you pay for the tachyon arrow. Oh, so high points. But you don't pay for the glaive. Exactly. So the tachyon arrow is kind of cute. There's a strat to make it actually reliable. Yeah. Um, but it's kind of neither here it's nor It's attacks. There. Yeah. You're, you're taking it as a tax because you have to. Exactly. So if you want your Overlord to be a beat stick, um, this is kind of the, the standard build we would go this for. This is the cheap standard build. Yeah. It's worth noting that when we're talking about the Overlord, we're talking about ways to make him cheap. Yeah. Because no matter what you do, it's not a good fighter. No. Right? Even when you put the strongest weapon on it, it's right. still only four attacks, no rerolls, no nothing. So you want it, it's a support character. You He's want to make it cheap. Much a support character. So we're talking about our ways to make it good and cheap. Yep. And the glaive <laughs> and the arrow are would be my standard loadout. Mm. Um, unless, unless you want to take the Resurrection Orb. That's right. Which um, we think is incredibly powerful. It is 30 points mm -hmm. for this for Which this seems kit. like a lot. It seems like a lot. Um, however, the ability to just immediately reanimate at, at, at any point in the game is really valuable. As you guys yeah. begin playing your games with the new Resurrection uh, reanimation protocols, you'll, you might find that it is possible to chip down units. And you say, oh, okay, yeah. my 20-man warriors are down to 5, 10 yeah. models. So the ability to just reactivate that at any point is a big deal. Not to mention... It works on everything, right? You only have four. to get, what, three warriors back or something you before you made your points. And yeah. uh, the truth is, if you're taking even one but two 20-man blobs of warriors, mm -hmm. I would always take a res orb. Yes. Um, because you're just going to get the value out of it. Yep. And if you want to take a res orb, you cannot take the glaive and arrow. Correct. So if you want to take the res orb, then the next weapon I would pair it with is the war scythe. Mm -hmm. It's still a strong weapon, still flat two damage, still yep. cheap, and uh, it builds you a nice little... Overlord. So those are kind of two choices. You have a flowchart. Do you want orb? Right. If so, orb plus war scythe. <laughs> Do you not want orb? You want cheap. Well, then it's glaive plus arrow. That's right. Well said. Um, that's that's really what it comes down to. There's a lot of little bits, but then at the end of the day, if you're wondering why they're there, it's because they still make models. For you them. could you could even choose to go cheaper and go with the the, the sword. Yeah. Um, but then he just does nothing, and that's sad. It's you so at least sad. want if he ever touches something, he can yeah. at least have a chance of doing a few wounds. He does, so that, yeah. That's why the war scythe, I, I at least go with. Because it, it has a chance. That's right. So that's the Overlord. Um, let's take a look at the, the, the literal core of the army, yeah. the Warriors. What that's do we right. Think? Well, the Warriors now have a new weapon for the first time that they didn't have before. Um, this is the Gauss Reaper. Yes. And this is an assault weapon, two shots at uh, just a measly range 12, right? Now, this weapon at first glance, the range sounds bad. Mm -hmm. But when you start thinking about it, 12 inches mm -hmm. is already the rapid fire range for your uh, other weapon, right? right? For your Gauss Flare. And the Gauss Flare rapid fires at 12, two shots. Mm -hmm. Well, this shoots two shots at 12 inches as well. So what's up? And this weapon has one more AP uh -huh. and one more strength. There it is. So, hmm, all of a sudden <laughs> you're not really doing that much damage at range no. with your Gauss weapons anyways. Like one shot, it's okay. Right. So the Gauss Reaper is already an amazing weapon and you could make a case for taking it most of the time. But if you're playing something like Mephrit, where that range goes up to 15 because plus three inch range, yep. I would say it's kind of an auto-take every time with Mephrit. Mm -hmm. um, I would always go with the, Gau the new Gauss Reaper. Absolutely. And for the rest of the dynasties, um, it's still very interesting as about half of your warriors. Yeah. So one of the best uses of it um, that you can actually do is combine it with the Knight Scythe, uh, Scythe Strat to actually get out, or even just the regular transport option. There's right? ways to get up in their face really close. really close. Yeah. And you, can, you can, and you can throttle that, right? So you yeah. have that, you have a, a blob or two blobs um, in position to come very close to the enemy. Again, you can, it is a 12 inch range, so you can't even start like coming in from reserve, things like that, yeah. be within range. Um, and then the rest would be your regular Goss, just for the longer range if they're gonna be sitting back. Yeah, the game, the way the game is played, you've got objectives on your backfield, yep. objectives on the midboard. So you kind of need both. So if you're gonna have a one unit on each backfield, cool, go with uh, just a few Gauss um, flares, that's the long range ones. Yep. Everyone walking up the board should have a Gauss Reaper. The Reapers. Yeah. Absolutely. And even still, 
you could make an argument for everyone having the Reaper. Mm -hmm. uh, when you think about the idea that they could advance and shoot, yeah. the Necrons are kind of slowish to begin with. Mm -hmm. So advancing gives you an opportunity to get up the board a little faster. Yeah. With My Will Be Done, you're still hitting on your same ballistic skill. Um, it's, a, it's a lot of range. Right, right. So the Gauss Reaper is surprisingly interesting. Most of the weapons I have are the flares, so I'm going to have to get some new new Reapers <laughs> up in here. That's right, and that new kit builds both. So. That's right. Uh, the next unit we're going to talk about is the Immortals. Yeah. Uh, we really like the Immortals. They are a core unit. They're they're an elite-style unit, but they actually get the core keyword. Yeah, and they're tougher than ever now. They're so tough. they got an extra toughness, um, and uh, there's two main ways that you can mm -hmm. build them, uh, but we have one that we really like. They always used to take the uh, Tesla because it just worked well on them, right? Yeah. You wanted all those shots and uh, you could always give them my will be done and explode those Tesla on fives. Well, because Teslas now only explode on six, yep. because the game has shifted towards really good armor saves, right? You've got whole armies at armor save two or armor save zero, right? It's just not good enough to yeah. have no AP. Right. You need AP. Mm -hmm. So they also took the Tesla and made it more expensive. Yeah, it's two points more. Right? <laughs> and uh, so the Gauss... Blaster is really the only option here for me. I think it blasts the other one out of yeah, the Yeah, even the with water. even with Mephret, where you get AP, yeah. that's the only thing that makes the Tesla playable, but right. it, it's still not even great. You might as well get minus three AP. You might as well. Like, oh, that's so tasty. And you get into short range easier. Yeah, exactly. So I, it's almost no contest there, right? There's... It's no contest. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's the Gauss Blaster now. That's another unfortunate because a you lot of mine with the Tesla. So, uh, and th and this is true. What they did is they took all the, they took the weapons that were bad and they made them good. So, if you've been a Necron player for a right. while, uh, unfortunately, your weapons uh, you're, you're gonna have to start snapping them off That's or right. doing whatever you want to do. Cut the bits, right? <laughs> start gluing little glowy bits to your Tesla. Yeah. <laughs> all right, the next one is the Lich Guard, mm. and I'm loving That's the so Lich cool. Guard. Um, they're so killy, and the Lich Guard have two options, yeah. right? They can take the War Scythe, sure, really great. Or they can take the sword and shield. Right, which now, used to be the traditional option. Yeah, and the sword and shield, at first glance, looks good, yeah. right? It gives them an extra attack, mm -hmm. and it gives them an extra armor save. And it is the new storm shield rule, yeah, so it's so a plus one save. and then four up. Yeah. So that looks good. It looks cool. But for me, this is no contest on the war side. That's right. And I'll tell you why. Yeah. It, the it. other option isn't bad. No. But what are you trying to do with your Lich Guard? At the end of the day, the Lich Guard is the most effective combat unit in the entire book. Mm. And when you're bringing them, you're bringing them to really kill something that they're gonna kind of come up against. Right. That only they could dig in there and get that unit. If you needed something that was tough on a point, mm -hmm. that's the definition of your whole army. Just take warriors or scarabs, scarabs even, or you know? anything. Anything yeah. in your army can sit on a point and be tough and do it with OPSEC. Mm -hmm. You don't need Lich Guard to stand on a point. No. And your opponents are used to killing Terminators. They're gonna right. be able to come and kill these guys. You need them to go up and kill anything they touch, and the War Scythe is going to do that for you. Yeah, that's where, very I'm, that's very well said, and I think that's not immediately apparent, right? Because the other guys, they do look great on paper, but you really have to be considering where do they fit in the overall schema of your army. Yeah. And that's something that it just doesn't show up in the profile, right? So exactly. And there's so many ways to make them even better at their killing job. Mm -hmm. I, I would always lean into you, This army does not need more help killing one wound models. No. This no. army kills one wound models <laughs> better than any That's I right. can think of. And these guys are great Primaris killers. My yes. gosh, the two damage is Kill great. vehicles, kill Primaris. There's lots of ways to pump them they'll, up. They'll kill your opponent's boss, they'll kill knights, they'll That's kill right. anything. So if you take the War Scythe, they can kill anything. Yeah. So the next unit um, is cool because we've actually seen uh, a few improvements on them. This yeah. is the Triarch, Sto Triarch Stalker. That's right. Um, it does have the new quantum shielding, th things like uh, things like that make it much, much tougher than it used to be. Agreed. Which actually pair quite well with the, with its weapons. This means it yeah. actually can afford to kind of be up uh, in, in the Moves the and shoots field. without penalty because 9th yep. edition. Exactly. It fights pretty well. It used to be used primarily just to give the bonus to hit, the rerolls to yeah. hit to your warriors and things like that. But now, we actually don't think that's the best way to go. Well, I actually, okay, that use, it can still do that it's use fine. case. Yeah. Um, but the heat ray is the weapon I would go with on yep. it. It's only five points more and it's got the new melter profile. Mm -hmm. It's also a really solid flamer. It's like a heavy flamer with 2d6 shots. Yeah. And the reason that's interesting is because this vehicle doesn't isn't scared about moving up. Correct. Because hey, you come up and you touch it, it'll fight you. It's got flat three damage on its four limbs. It's only got three attacks, but flat three damage, and then it's flaming you in combat. It's it's just a lot harder to shut down, and you'll yeah. still get a lot of effectiveness the out of it. The flamer is funny because at first you're like, oh, like it's fine, it's a cute flamer or whatever, but the fact that you can be flaming in combat now, yeah. it's actually a big deterrent. You can't just run up and tag him with And because you know, he's punching you, bodies. it's just not, you're going to lose a lot. Yeah, exactly. It's not reliable for your opponent to tag, so that's yeah. great. Um, it, it just gives it a lot of multi-purpose, right? Yeah. It, can, it can take out vehicles, which this army doesn't actually have 
Normally when you do a big build with a silver tide or something like that, mm -hmm. you don't have a lot of those vehicle killing guns. Correct. Yeah. So anywhere you could get an efficient, you know, two shot melta, yeah. I'd take it. I like it. It's cool. Um, so What's we talked next? about the Lich Guard. Let's talk about their their cousins. Um, yeah, these are they're non core, non -core cousins. <laughs> these I'm not the Praetorians. Better. You love these guys. <laughs> I love them. I would love them more if they had core. The Triarch Praetorians, an amazing combat unit. They rival the Lich Guard. Um, they're actually both virtually the same, mm -hmm. except the Praetorians don't have the core keyword, which gives them a lot of disadvantages. Yeah. But in this case, this is one of the most obvious weapon options, right? They can have uh, the pistol and the sword. <laughs> Or they could have the Rod of the Covenant. Yes. And the Rod of the Covenant outshoots the other version that has mm -hmm. a dedicated gun. Right. And it dramatically outfights, and you're not even giving up durability. So the Rod of the Covenant is like the only right answer here. It's just flat out the better way to go. It's an amazing profile. If you haven't seen it, go check it yeah. out. Uh, and it's two damage flat, great at killing. Two damage in shooting, two damage in combat. That's right, even the shooting is yeah. two damage. So, so and great. it's an assault weapon, not a pistol. Um, it's all around way better. It's the same logic we applied to the Lich Guard. Mm -hmm. We're applying that exact same logic here. That's right. So, and it looks cooler. What's Just go the with roll it. for them. Yep. Uh, at least on the other one, the sword looks good. <laughs> so <laughs> you have an excuse to be like, nah, it's cooler. Right. But the rod actually looks cooler. It on looks these guys. so much cooler. That's right. Um, so another one, the Tomb Blade. This was the hardest call this one is in hard. the entire book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the Tomb Blades used to be kind of no question. Everyone mm -hmm. ran them with Tesla. Sure. They were a great. Tesla yep. kind of a transport because you get so many Tesla shots, you give them my will be done and it would turn into a boatload Ooh. of shots. Yep. Well, my will be done doesn't work quite the same way with Tesla, right. of course. So you're not going to get all that Tesla value. And as we said before with Tesla, no AP, it's not doing the business anymore. Yeah. And you're paying a lot for these guys and they're not durable. So if they're not hitting hard and they're not durable, right. what are they? Yeah. So, <laughs> well, you can make them fast and cheap. Mm -hmm. And I really think that the basic weapon that no one ever takes... Um, the particle it's, beamer? Yeah. yeah, it's six shots. And it's basically a Tesla with six shots instead of four, mm -hmm. but without the Tesla. And it's free. You pay five points more for a Tesla. I actually right. think this is the best weapon because it's just a lot of DACA. So you'll find a you know a, an easy-to-kill target, sure, like a big screen, and that screen's gone. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, and you've made them <laughs> cheap, so even when you start losing them, no big deal. Yeah, they're like thirty-five points or whatever it is. You don't you don't care too much. That's right. And one of the only <clears throat> I guess disadvantage of the particle caster is it's shorter range. It's only eighteen as opposed to the, yeah. the longer range of the other ones. But these guys move very very. They fast. They move fourteen, and there's a one CP strat to advance and shoot. Exactly. So because of those things, it actually makes the particle caster very interesting and makes yeah. up for it's arguably only one weakness in comparison to the other ones. Yeah. Right? The other choice, if you wanted, to, so we like that best just because it's cheap. Sure. And it's DACA. But the other weapon, if you really wanted them to be someone who did damage, is the Gauss. Yeah, you get that extra rend. Um, so you get two extra rend. That's right. <laughs> this is basically like a mortal Gauss, right? That's right. So it, you will do more damage. It will have more AP. But you do also have to get closer, right? So you're still getting within... They're a 30-inch uh, rapid fire, right? Yeah. So you have to get within 15 to pop that. And so again, now that the, the actual the effective range of this yeah. weapon is very similar to the particle caster. So if you need AP, go for the Gauss. Um, if you want to keep them just cheap and clearing chafe, which is great because we have lots of other weapons yeah. with rent, go with the particle caster. Yeah, the Tomb Blade's not my favorite. And like, I don't think any of these really hit the sweet spot for me. But right. I think uh, I think both the particle caster and the Gauss, I would feel fine. Mm. All mine are built with Tesla. Um, <laughs> and the Tesla is the weapon I like the least now. So right. I'll have to fix that. Totally. Okay, the next one is the Locust Heavy Destroyers. Sure. They always had Heavy Destroyers. But now they it's a new kit with some new weapon options. And it comes with the Gauss Destructor, or the Enigmatic Disintegrator, I believe. Yeah, I think you got that. <clears throat> that is quite a weapon name. And they're weird mirrors of each other. They are. Right? The uh, the Disintegrator is 3d3 shots, yeah. strength 7, 1 damage. Right. The other one is 1 shot, <laughs> but 3d3 damage, strength exactly. 10, minus a bunch, yeah. <laughs> uh, 3d3 damage. Now, I only like the 3d3 damage version. This is the Gauss Destructor, and it's... For some of the same logic I've been applying before, where mm -hmm. you have lots of ways to do one damage with this army, you have a no shortage. Shots with a million other and in fact, anything you want to do one damage, yeah. you should put on a warrior body yeah. because they reanimate so much better. Exactly. These bodies do not reanimate very well, and so if you're bringing it, you better bring it to do something that nothing else can do. That's right. And nothing else can do three d three damage. They very well said. This is also kind of a, <laughs> yeah, it's it's a single shot. So yes, it can it can skew one way or another, but at least we have those rerolls, so you can have a yeah. high influence on this uh, this weapon that does almost. It's, it's almost incomparable to anything else in, in this army. So yeah. That's a cool tool to have. And hey, if you're taking it as the Caesarean Dynasty or something like that, you'll get that reroll to wound, get that little efficiency. You get a lot of value there. Yeah, yeah. and they've already got the hardwired for hatred, mm -hmm. and so they're hitting a little better. And so cool. 
Yeah, I think I like the uh, Locust Heavy Destroyers just as like a single model. Right. Like one over here, one over there, yeah. and just like pop a shot, you know? <laughs> uh, 70 point, pop a big cool. shot, and maybe you'll get lucky and just ice something big. You know three, what I mean? Three, it's so funny. Like who cares? If, it, if it, the one time it works, you'll feel yeah. great. It's a funny another way to, to, to uh, enable a certain amount of consistency in that shot, right? It's yeah. not Melta, but it's 3 3, which is like pretty interesting. Yeah, so. I, I totally dig it. <laughs> okay, last um, is the Monolith. Yeah. And this is a, uh, this never used to have war gear choices. No. Right, you used to only be able to take um, the rapid fire weapons. Mm -hmm. Now the new kit is going to come with the option to take four death rays on it. That's cool. And I like the death rays. It's mm -hmm. five points more per death ray, so twenty for a monolith. Yeah. When you're, when you're buying a monolith, twenty more points. You're in for a nickel. You're in for a yeah, a dime. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're doing a very American version of that. Yeah, uh, that saying, wow, <laughs> I uh, I've never heard someone Americanize it so much. Um, I feel a little uncomfortable all of a sudden. Um, <laughs> the death rays are interesting because they're a mega kill cannons, yeah, right? Exactly. And anytime you can, again, tech into those, I mm -hmm. think that's exciting because that's the army has awesome. so little of that. And uh, uh, the death rays are fantastic. So uh, 20 points and make your monolith like a real terrifying uh, tank killing machine. Right? I'm into it's it. It's just giant disco monster of like laser beam death. Yeah. And it, again, it is a profile that it's harder to find in the rest of the army. You have all your plink wounds you need. Do the, death the, the rapid fire guns are good. It's 24 shots at rapid fire range. Yeah. But again, you have no shortage of ways of right. spitting out tons and tons of shots. And in fact, you have much more efficient ways with especially my will be done and yeah. and all your warriors and things like and that. This so is a very reasonable price. Like five more five points in, in addition. Uh, yeah. To the, to the so weapon. each one of these is more powerful than the last cannon. Yeah. Exactly. And one last cannon's 15 points. Yep. You're getting four of these for 20 points. Right. This is a bargain. <laughs> this is an absolute bargain. Yeah, yeah. Um, these death rays are crazy. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, death like rays. It. Do the death rays. Okay, so as we can see, there was a, a lot of weapon option changes there and very different from 8th edition. Yeah. So hopefully you kept your bits. I know. Um, or you're ready to paint up some new units. I know I am. Yep. Um, but uh, we really think if you go with these weapon options, you'll see a lot more of a boost. And if you're playing your Necrons with the old weapons and it's not really working out, that's probably why. Because yeah. some of these are not the best weapons, yeah, the old ones. Definitely give them a rethink. Um, yeah. So if you are interested, we have a number of other videos coming out uh, that have already come out last, uh, in the past week that we're yeah. putting out over the next few days. We also have uh, the Space Marine equivalent. So if you want to know what you're going to be up against when facing against Space yeah. Marines, you can definitely check that out. So if you enjoyed this, if you found it informative, definitely like and subscribe. And uh, we'll be seeing these Necrons back on the battlefield very soon. Yeah. So we'll see you then.